Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Top 10 Countdown. I'm your host, Jordan Ross. And in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I put together a list of the top 10 St. Patrick's Day movies of all time. First up is the hilariously bad horror film that made a star out of Jennifer Aniston. I'm of course talking about 1993's Leprechaun. This cult classic follows an evil and sadistic leprechaun who goes on a killing spree in order to find his precious pot of gold. As far as comedic slasher films go, this is pretty much top of the line. However, it definitely has more laughs than it does scares, even if the laughs are often unintentional. Still, Warwick Davis gives it his all. He's like a miniature Freddy Krueger. And, like the Nightmare on Elm Street films, Leprechaun went on to spawn several sequels, including the classics Leprechaun in the Hood and Leprechaun in Space. As far as films to watch on St. Patrick's Day, though, nothing beats the original. What? What are you? What do I look like, me lad? See that? The buckles on me shoes? Why, I'm a leprechaun! Next up was one of my favorite Disney Channel original movies as a kid, Luck of the Irish. This film follows a teenager who must battle an evil leprechaun in a basketball game for a gold charm to save his family. This movie is completely ridiculous, but it's filled with charm and silly characters, including a really fun performance from the late, great Henry Gibson. Like all Disney Channel movies, The Luck of the Irish is cheesy, poorly written, and the acting is over the top. However, that doesn't change the fact that it's a perfect St. Patrick's Day movie, especially if you're looking for one to watch with the kids. Why don't you give him some of that corned beef and cabbage there, Patrick? I'm always happy to share a meal with a fellow leprechaun. <laughs> Next up is the first of two Martin Scorsese films that I included on my list. Gangs of New York follows a young man who sets out to avenge his father's death by starting a war against the man who killed him, Bill the Butcher, who was brought to life by Daniel Day-Lewis in one of his most memorable roles to date. This is one of the most brutal and action-packed films in Martin Scorsese's filmography. It's worth watching any time thanks to the strong performances, beautiful action sequences, and stunning set pieces. But what makes it an ideal St. Patrick's Day movie is that at the heart of it all, it's a film about Irish identity, Irish heritage, and Irish pride. Bill's got mixed feelings as regards the Irish. Number seven is a film about one of the most iconic Irishmen in history. I'm talking about Michael Collins. If you're unfamiliar with Michael Collins, he was an Irish revolutionary who led a guerrilla war against the UK, helped negotiate the creation of the Irish Free State, and led the National Army during the Irish Civil War. He was essentially Ireland's William Wallace. Liam Neeson brings the historical icon to life in this powerful biopic that beautifully portrays the Irish struggle for a free nation. It also stars Aidan Quinn, Brendan Gleeson, Julia Roberts, and the late Alan Rickman. But I'd like you to send them a message. If they shut me up, who'll take my place? Who's going to take my place? I can't hear you. Who'll take my place? If they shut you up. Next up is the 1952 classic, The Quiet Man, which happens to be the oldest film on my list. In one of their many collaborations, John Ford and John Wayne trade in their usual Wild West setting for the beautiful countryside of Ireland. Wayne plays a retired American boxer who returns to the Irish village he was born in and ends up falling in love. While Wayne and Ford are known for action-packed westerns, the fact that this is a romantic dramedy doesn't diminish its enjoyability even a little. This is one of the most beautiful films to watch on my list, as it was all shot on location, and it serves as a tribute to the great country of Ireland. On top of that, it was nominated for seven Oscars, winning Best Director and Best Cinematography. So bold one you are. And who gave you leave to be kissing me? So you can talk. Yes, I can. I will and I do. And it's more than talk you'll be getting if you step a step closer to me. Don't worry, you got a wallop. Number five is the second and final Martin Scorsese film on my list. The Departed. One of the best gangster films ever made, The Departed follows an undercover cop and a mole in the police department as they attempt to identify each other while infiltrating an Irish gang in South Boston. The cast is extremely impressive and everyone gives excellent performances. It also features a large dose of fighting, cursing, and drinking. I mean, it wouldn't be a movie about Irish mobsters without those three things. This went on to win four of the five Oscars it was nominated for, including the only Oscar of Martin Scorsese's long, incredible career. I got this rat, this annoying, cheating rat. And 
it brings up questions. You know, see, Bill, like, you're the new guy. Next up is the only cartoon on our list. The Secret of Kells is a beautifully animated film about Irish mythology and heritage that follows a young boy in a remote medieval outpost who befriends a mischievous but sweet forest fairy and a master illuminator who possesses an ancient book that is filled with secrets and powers. This is a film that kids will love thanks to its fantasy adventure aspect and its stunning animation, but its complex emotions, fascinating mythology, and at times, terrifying battle sequences make it much more than your average cartoon. You don't need to have a kid to enjoy this film. La La Land has rejuvenated the appetite for musicals, so here's a musical that way more people need to see. I'm talking about 2007's Once. This sweet film follows a busker and an immigrant in Dublin, as they write, rehearse, and record songs that tell their love story. As great as La La Land was, Once set the standard for the modern musical. This is one of my favorite movie romances in a long time, and a big part of that is the setting, which perfectly captures the romance and charm of Dublin and its occupants. I don't know you, but I want you all the more for that. And words fall through me, no. Number two is the most recent film on my list, 2015's Brooklyn. This rich period drama tugs at the heartstrings. Brooklyn follows an Irish immigrant who arrives in 1950s Brooklyn, where she quickly falls into a romance with a local boy. However, she is soon faced with a decision between the two countries, and more specifically, the two men that are fighting for her in each of them. Earning three Oscar nominations, Brooklyn is a beautiful tale of young love, but what makes it a perfect film to watch on St. Patrick's Day is that it gives the audience a look at what life was like for an Irish immigrant at that time. We don't really know anything of the rest of the world. We must seem very backward to you now. Of course not. You seem calm and civilized and charming. Finally, the number one movie to watch on St. Patrick's Day is 1959's Darby O'Gill and the Little People. This charming classic follows a wily old man who goes up against the king of the leprechauns, all while helping play matchmaker for his daughter and the strapping young lad who has replaced him as caretaker. The aforementioned strapping young lad happens to be played by a young Sean Connery in one of his breakout roles before being cast as James Bond just a few years later. This film literally has everything you want in a St. Paddy's Day movie. It's sweet, charming, magical, and filled to the brim with Irish heritage. She is my dear, my darling one, my smiling and big island one. I love the ground she walks upon, my darling Irish girl. Anyway, did I leave out your favorite St. Patrick's Day movie? Let me know in the comments section. Also, be sure to hit subscribe, like this video, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching this episode of Top 10 Countdown. Until next time, have a happy St. Patrick's Day, and until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross.